Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you have been having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's do some awesome crafting. Stay tuned. Hey, are you watching the video? and you've not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I can promise you that you're not going to be disappointed. We are about to do something totally amazing and that's what we do every day. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you join this online crafting family. And here it is guys. This is absolutely fabulous. I took one of the papers from my pad that had the large print, but the print was primarily in the corner and I used it to create this beautifully decorative tray and it's an elevated tray because I added some feet to it and what did I use for feet? I used plain old unfinished wooden craft candlesticks that I picked up at Hobby Lobby quite a few years ago but they work on this project they are so wonderful and this really is a functional piece because you can set it out in any room of your home. You can set things on it because we have quadrupled our chipboard so it is now super sturdy. You can place it in the bathroom, you can place it in the kitchen, you can place it in the living room. I have used a sealant on the front and we'll go over that later in the video so that this becomes very multifunctional. It truly is all in what you want to do with it and it is super, super easy to make. So y'all, let's make it. Our projects, we're, all right guys, so to make our project, we're going to need a couple of odds and ends. So I have two decorative handles and these are just regular handles that would be on a drawer or a cabinet. And I will have a link for these in the description box. You don't have to place these on yours if you don't want. And then I have these four mini candlesticks. I've had these things for about three years. Never knew what I really wanted to do with them. but just picked them up because they were on clearance at Hobby Lobby. But they are perfect for this project. Then we are going to need four pieces of chipboard that measure 8 by 12. I know this is a lot of chipboard being used on this project. But it gives us that strength that we need to be able to place something of weight on this little bench or countertop shelf, whatever it is you want to use it for. Then I have a piece of decorative paper that measures seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And then I have my large 12 by 12 paper that has that offset print on it. So we are going to get started on making this. So I have already joined three of my boards together and I'll join the fourth one with you guys. So I'm basically using my Y double strip tape and I'll have that link in the description box. And then I'll take my fourth piece of medium weight chipboard. If you don't want to use this many pieces of chipboard, however many you choose to use is up to you. So now I've got four layers of this chipboard and I have a very, very hard and steady base to work with. So now what I want to do is I am going to cover this in tape and we are going to place it down on the 12 by 12. So I'll cover this with tape and be right back. All right guys, so I have my tape on the back of my quadruple layer of eight by 10 chipboard. And all I'm going to do is just turn this around so that I can sort of get an idea of where I want to place this. So when I flip this over, I know that this is going to be on this side now. So I need to make sure that when I'm placing my board down, I'm placing it down on this side. So I am going to take this and put it down I need to make sure that I'm putting it down so that I'll have enough border to wrap around my edges. And now I'm going to trim off my excess. And let's see how I did. Okay, so I've got a pretty good um, print on here, so 
I am going to take my stylus with the narrow end here and just go around this chipboard very well and I'm pressing down into the paper and I'm using the chipboard as the guide so that I can fold this over. Okay, so once I have my scores in, I am just going to take this and fold it on all four sides. Then I'll take it and I'm just going to wrap it like this on all four sides. Okay, so once we have the wrap around done, we need to miter the edges, but we need to miter wide edges because we need to fold this over four layers of chipboard. So I am going to miter and just keep testing until I don't have any of the corner protruding. So I know that I can remove just a little bit more, so I will. Then I'll take it and fold it. And what I mean by the corner protruding is you can see I've got that point right there. I really don't want that. So I am just going to come in a little bit and see if I can just notch out just like that. And it's getting better. So I'm going to go ahead and just do all of these ends on all four sides. Okay, so once we have the edges mitered the way that we want, I am going to use my double stick tape and place it down on the four corners or the edges of my chipboard. You can place the tape on the paper. You can even place glue on the paper. Completely up to you. I'm just placing my tape So then once we have our tape around the edges, we can just take one piece of this, and we're gonna do this one piece at a time, and just wrap it around. And then I'm just going to take my spatula and go around the corners. So if I do have any of my corners protruding, I'll be able to just fold those in. And so we're going to do the same thing over here. So I'll take my paper, wrap it around, and lay it down. Then I'm going to take my spatula and just go around the corners just in case I have any of my edges protruding. I can fold those in and get them wrapped around and now we can take this piece and fold it over just like that. And we'll do the same thing over here. So we'll just fold it over just like this. And now you can see, oh my, we have a beautiful, beautiful board. And we've got enough of that flower showing that this really is a gorgeous little piece if you want to have it sitting out somewhere in your home. And I am just going to take my big old spatula and just smooth out my paper on, on the top and then all the way around. Okay, so now that we have this, we need to take this piece and I'm just going to go with that on the bottom. We need to take that piece and put it down. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take a layer of my tape and just cover the exposed chipboard with my tape. So now that I have my chipboard covered in tape, I am going to take my seven and three quarters by nine and three quarter inch liner piece, run glue along the edges and make sure that you get plenty of glue on those edges so that everything will stay stuck down. And then we're going to just place this down. So I'll take this piece, bring this to me just a little bit, and I am going to try to get that centered. 
Then I'll use my spatula, spread out that glue, make sure that you get your corners down nice and tight. And then I'll use my paper towel just to come in and clean up. And don't you think that that is just oh so pretty. And then guys, I am going to add just a little bit of Mod Podge to this because I want to be able to protect it if we're going to put it anywhere where there might be some humidity. And I'm probably breaking all types of rules in how I'm applying this. This is the way that I have always applied Mod Podge to things like this. And I like it because it gives it that textured look. But you can certainly just do yours with a brush to get that smooth finish. So I am going to do this whole top level here once. And then once it dries, I'll come back and we'll add a second coating on here. Okay, so I added the second coat of Mod Podge to our project and I'm just letting that dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I'm covering the candlesticks in paint. So I am using acrylic paint by Folk Art and the name of it is Faded Jade. And you can find those paints at any craft store. So all I'm doing is I found these daubers at the Dollar Tree and I am just putting a big old glob of my paint onto the candlestick and then I'm just working it in going all the way around and you put as much or as little on as you want until you get the coating that you like. Now I'm not going to do the feet because it's going to be sitting flat. If you want to do the feet of yours you can then I'm not going to do this part because it'll be glued to the bottom of our beautiful board here. So we're going to allow these to dry as well as that board. When we come back, we're going to be in the home stretch of finishing this up. Peter. All right guys, so everything is dry now. The legs are dry, my board is dry. When I run my fingers across this, it feels like a nice textured wallpaper. So durable. So I am going to flip this over and we'll bring in the feet and we're going to place them down just like this. Now, if you want to paint the bottoms of your feet, you sure can, but you don't have to, and I didn't. So the way that I am going to place my feet, I am going to use my E6000. You can use your reptile glue for this. My reptile glue bottle is empty and I need to refill it, but my E6000 is right here. So I am just running E6000 along the bottom, want to get a nice coating, then I'm going to take this and just place it wherever I want it to be. So let's do this one. I'm going to take that E6000 and just run it along the bottom. This E6000 will set up in about 15 minutes 15 to 25 minutes, but it actually needs a full 24 hours to cure. So I'll be able to handle this with you guys in about 15 minutes, but I will need to let this sit overnight for it to fully cure. So I am going to take my glue, place it on this little rim here. Put it down. Then I'll take my final one and I'm just going to place it here. And I'll let this dry. So I am going to let this dry for about 15 minutes and then we'll come back and finish our chat. All right, guys, so the feet are dry on here, and I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but this is such a sweet little countertop shelf. It is perfect. And you know what else I was thinking when I was putting this one together is if you wanted to, you could actually make your own custom shelving for your craft fairs. You could find longer legs and just stack these in tiers of two or three, then you could display some of your own items on your own custom shelf. And then 
you could turn around and sell that shelf. How awesome is that? But this just looks so stinking cute. And we are going to take these old handles and we are going to add the handles. And I'm adding these strictly for decorative purposes because wherever you choose to sit this, you can place on it whatever you want. But I just like to add these little elements to my projects. Um, I'm quirky that way. So I am using my E6000. And I am going to take this and place it down right about there. I'm going to turn this to the side so I can make sure I've got it nice and spaced right. So now I think I do. And I can take it and come on this side and do the same things. So if you choose to work with E6000, just know that you need to be in a nicely ventilated area because it is a very um, strong smelling adhesive. So just make sure that if you're working indoors, have your window open so that you can ventilate just a little bit and it won't cause you any problems. So we're going to put these down, let these dry, and then I'll be back. Our handles are, are All right guys, so our handles are on and they are dry enough for me to be able to handle this little cutie. And it really is, I wish you guys could see it in person, but I'm going to just turn it to the side again so that you can get the full view of this. It is so perfect with these legs. And if you wanted something with a slight elevation, whether you're going to sit it in the bathroom, the kitchen, on a coffee table, on your desk at work, wherever you choose to put this, however you choose to use it, it is an immediate, immediate statement maker. This has so many purposes and we used just some chipboard some wooden, some unfinished wooden candlesticks and a few decorative touches in the handles to make this. But this is just another way of how we can use those large sheets that have offset prints. Don't you guys think that this is beautiful? Even if you didn't want to put the feet on here, you could still make yourself a little tray just with the top and the handles. Or let's say you don't want to put the handles on, but you want to put the feet. You've still got that cuteness totally up to you. And what we are able to do with paper, guys, is only limited by our imaginations. So just start looking at paper for what it can be and think outside of the box, not the way everyone else is using it, but how can you use it? And I'm sure that you'll come up with some pretty creative ways to now use some of those large prints or the offset prints that are in our paper pads. So I am going to show you guys one more thing because I wanted to make sure that I showed y'all the Mod Podge that I'm using. I am using the Satin Mod Podge and I got this from Hobby Lobby last year and it was $6.99 and I used a 40% off coupon. So you can generally find Mod Podge anywhere. It's all in how much you want to pay for it. But on this one, I use the satin sheen to give myself just a little bit of a shine, but not high gloss. And then of course I have that textured feel that I use from pouncing uh, my Mod Podge on instead of spreading it on with a brush. So I hope that this has given you guys yet another idea on how we can use those paper pads and the papers in those pads that contain large offset or large centered prints. This is just yet another awesome way to use it, but it's also a functional one because this just isn't decorative. It is functional and useful. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.